And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today I have something spectacular to show you, and that is Turing Tumble. Uh, this is a, it says build marble power computers. Now, if you're like me, and I think most sane people are, you love watching marbles run through marble machines. You go places and you see that, that's amazing. And I've talked about several of them on our show before. But this is a marble computer. Um, it's called Turing Tumble, you know, for, because of Alan Turing. And what it does is it walks kids or anybody, walks them through programming steps, things that teach you different actual facts of programming by having switches and cogs and things like that as marbles drop down uh, and to show you a little bit of some basic programming, but you also get to watch marbles go down and do neat things. Let me show you what's inside this pretty big box. So the game comes, I'm going to kind of show you the components first. It has these two legs, they snap in here, I've already taken them out. And these two legs are going to slide together like this. Then this plastic piece comes out and you see the main board here, which has some switches here. These switches are actually attached on the back to some ball releases in the top. You can see as I move the one on the top, it also moves the one on the bottom. The game also comes with a very big book here. Turing Tumble Puzzle Book, that's spiral bound, and then with a bunch of places to keep all the different pieces that come with this game. So what you're going to do is you're going to place this tray in here, like this, and you can see how this whole board is set up, and you are going to follow puzzles in the puzzle book. Now the puzzle book tells you everything that comes in, tells you a little bit of how to set it up, and then goes through a comic. And this comic, something's bad is happening to the protagonist, and she has to figure it out. And it starts showing you some basic things, and it will give you a puzzle. For example, it tells you this is what the balls are to look like. It gives you some things that you're going to start with, and then it tells you how many parts you're going to add to put something together. And you're going to build a machine with those parts. The answers are then in the back of the book. And the book slowly walks you through the different parts of the machine. Let me show you a few of the parts of the machine. So there's different kinds of uh, setups that you can put here. So here we see these little things here which have these balls in them that weight them down and they'll just come when the ball hits them and fall down to the next spot. We have a switch that when the ball comes into it, it will switch one way, then go the other way. And switches are how you'll, you'll use to make sure balls uh, go in different patterns. This is just a crossover. When it hits this side, it goes to the other side. So this is a fairly simple one here. So uh, let me show you how this one works here. So I do this, which drops the blue ball down. See it falls into the switch, which makes it come this way making another blue ball come down. This time it goes the other way in the switch, dropping it so that a red ball comes down. Now the red ball comes over here and drops a blue ball down, which drops another one. So you can see here that I'm building a pattern of blue, blue, red, blue, blue, red. And you can do all sorts of things as you do this, and it teaches kids the different kinds of switches. These aren't the only kind of switches that you can put in here. There are cog switches where when you put them in, they will move other switches with them. So you can have two switches work together. There are also catchers where you can catch a ball. So that will basically stop a ball from going through. And maybe you can say, all right, kids, you need to count the 12th ball to go through or whatever. So this is a pretty neat setup. Let me show you another one. So here's another machine here. You can see I have these switches here that are basically cogs and they're going to be moving in different directions. And so when you play a certain scenario, you have the ability to kind of set these switches up at the beginning. Sometimes it will show you a scenario and you have to figure out what are the proper way to set up the switches to get any particular pattern. So here I have both these switches pointed this way. This switch I'm going to have point this way. This one I'm going to have point this way. These Two switches that are together are going to point up like this. I got some crossover pieces in here. I'm using most of the pieces that are in the game with the exception of these ball catchers where you can have a ball stop. I have eight oranges and eight blues. Let's see what happens here. So you can see the first orange comes through and lets a blue come through. That first blue comes and knocks another blue down. Which in turn knocks a third blue down. And are we going to be with blues? No, because now the next blue comes over and knocks an orange down. And so 
you can try to build a specific pattern. You can see right now the pattern is one orange and then four blues. And so I can make very basic patterns, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, two reds, two blues, etc. But this allows me to make some unique patterns and it shows uh, you how the different switches work. So you can see there was one orange, then four blues, then three oranges, and it looks like going to be another four blues. Then that last blue comes over and starts the oranges again. So we have one, four, three, four. Let's see how many oranges come down here. That's the second orange. Here comes the third. So this is not a very common pattern, but it shows it shows kids or whoever's playing this how you use these switches. You can use these switches for counting, you can use these switches for and or situations. And so there's a lot of different possibilities that you can do with the book. And I just showed you a couple of them. As you can see, it's very hypnotic as these balls are dropping and it can be a lot of fun and you can, you know, there's a lot of different balls in here. Now, the game is not completely perfect. The, you have to kind of set the board up on as level of a platform as you can. I've had a lot of times where the balls will fall off. The balls themselves are very small metal balls and so if you're putting it in here and you know sometimes when I'm putting them up here for whatever reason I'm like ah oh, and I drop it and then the machine starts running and you got to grab it down here before you know it, it knocks the next ball from coming through. Um, and then at the end I wish there was an easier way to get these out. I found the easiest way is to kind of just push them like this then they pop out of the frame. Um, but everything stores very well. The whole thing is a very very nice production. Let's go to final thoughts. <laughs> Okay, folks, straight up, I love this. I really do. I mean, I know the box is humongous and gigantic, but I will find a place in my house for it. The idea of, you know, watching the marbles fall down these chutes is such a fascinating one, and it's neat just to see the machine run and go off. That's really cool, right? And I won't admit, I won't lie, that's part of my attraction to it. But I'm also fascinated by this puzzle book here. Not only is it done in a fairly friendly way where, hey, you know, I'm going through and I'm seeing what happens in the comic book, but it goes through these different things and it teaches you one thing at a time. This was a really good way I was able to teach my kids binary numbers, right? And the on and off switch. But just also basically what's gonna happen. I mean, at first it's just, hey, the marble hits here, goes here, knocks this one down. That's a pretty neat concept in and of itself. But then to say if the switch is here and it goes this way and goes to another switch, that second switch is only going to be hit every other time, and then that's going to split and go different directions. And when this switch moves, it also moves this switch, and the, the book really clearly talks you through that and tells you how these things work. And then, of course, there's even more stuff on the website. Um, so it works as a teaching logic teaching programming with it. It works as a completely entertaining thing to watch and to play around with. And then it also works on one level as a, um, as a uh, puzzle that you go through. Now, wow, now I have two balls going at the same time? I've never tried that before. So yeah, sometimes, and I have this one here kind of at a different angle because I'm just showing it off here. Sometimes the balls mess up and I haven't found that it works perfectly every single time, but it works pretty well. I was very impressed with this and I've, I've gone through more than half the scenarios already. I've messed with, I made up my own scenarios. I've really had a lot of fun with this and my kids have fun too. Some of the smaller ones, just watching how it works and the older ones, uh, trying to figure out the puzzles. This is such an amazing thing. Um, like I said, fun, puzzly, educational, the greatest of combos. Dice Tower Judgment, excellent!